Hey. Yeah, what a beautiful day to start um, our, our service uh, off this morning. You know, um, I wonder whether anybody's thought about New, Re- New Year's resolutions. It, it's at least the second, so I'm sure a lot of these New Year resolutions have fallen by the way side already. <laughs> Uh, I'm not very big on New Year's resolutions um, because, you know, if we're thinking about what we can do in our strength, then um, they're really not going to come to pass. They're going to fall by the wayside, aren't they? But um, as we come to the new year, let's be people who have an expectation that God will fulfil his purpose in our lives. Um, And and let's, let's be mindful that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And uh, it, it is only as we allow his work in, in us that we will become anything um, that will bring him glory. And so as we come this morning, uh, let's be mindful of that. And we do, we've come this morning and we do, we worship a mighty God. It says in Revelation Chapter 1, verse 8, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I am the one who was, who always, oh, sorry, who is, I am the one who is, I, who always was and who is still to come, the Almighty One. And He's our God. You know, we see a lot of things going on in, in our world today and, you know, we wonder what's, what's, for us in 2022 but we know that our God is for us and if our God is for us who can stand against us and uh, we also know that he works all things for our good so as we come into this year let's be mindful of the God that we serve and as we worship him this morning let's be mindful of his greatness and who he is thank you worship team Let's rise. Let's stand. I know you guys are watching me and I don't have my mask on. Luckily, as we sing, we don't need to. But know that you don't need to see my mouth to hear me testify to the King, yeah? People don't need to see your mouth move to know that you're smiling, that you're testifying to the King who has a plan and a purpose right now, who is doing something even as we wait to see what it is that he's doing. We love your presence. Oh, Lord, come have your way, God. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory. The King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory. The King above all kings. This is amazing grace. Who rules the nations with truth and justice? 
Shine like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King of all challenged me with again. I know we've heard it a lot lady, lately. Isaiah 43, 19. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness. I'm making streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Are we ready for streams? Are we ready for the rain to fall? You know, the, the message that Pastor Daryl gave us, are we ready to get wet? Are we ready to get wet? We can't address the new the same as we've seen the old, because it's different. Father, we're ready for your rain. Come, come. Do a new thing in us, through us, and with us, Lord. We're so thirsty. We're so thirsty. We're going to fight for the new. We're going to fight for our hearts to see it. We're going to make space for God to change, to renew within us and over us. You see my victory hey. When all I see is a mountain You see the mountain And as I walk through the shadow Your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe. 
with you. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every tear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you are for me, who can be against me? Oh, for Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the good. fortress you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our God you shine in the shadow you win every battle nothing can stand against the power of our God no mighty fortress you go before us Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Mighty force. Even as we sing this, God, we're praying for families to be united again. We're praying for health to be 100%, Lord. We're praying for families that have lost to know the comfort and the wholeness of your faith, your family, Lord. Nothing can stand. You go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Shine in the shadow. You win every battle. our minds to think victory and not just think victory but live victory lord change this in us lord we pray that we would see the victory and live the victory and be able to show those around us that there is victorious life even now lord have your way look we sing because you're worthy we love your presence church, the world needs to hear you. They need to hear you testify to the faithfulness of God in your life. Not in a wet fish slap kind of way, but just in a gracious, he's changed me and I need him and he is worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of 
of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none besides you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your love and lead me in your love to those Sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever breathe. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
Church, when we get to the end of ourselves, that's where we cry out for help. Where we cry out for, for God. But what if we cried out before we reach the end? More of you.
great way to start off 2022 the battle belongs to the Lord let's be reminded of that but also um, singing and, and thinking about how good our God is he's a good good God and we'd just like to invite Gary now to uh, bring us around the table this morning uh, to remind us a little bit more about the goodness of God and who he is to us Thank you, Phil. Good morning, church. Happy New Year. As the stewards come around with our emblems this morning, as we come around the table and as we think about our Saviour, Jesus, I just have two little thoughts for you this morning. The first one is that everything has changed and everything is different. And the second one is that some things just don't change at all. And so, as we think about Jesus and as we think about the cross, and as I've had discussions uh, with some of the people in my life, friends, even some family, um, Christmas is actually really easy uh, to understand and it's actually a really special time because the way that God came into the world was very important. It fulfilled a number of prophecies and it, and it actually shows us that Jesus is God. Well, equally, the way that Jesus died is really important because if he'd done it any other way, he might not have been able to achieve the whole reason that he came to this earth, the whole reason that he came for us, that he put on skin, came down to this earth. We've just celebrated Christmas. We, we know that he came, but he came for a reason. And, and you know... That doesn't change. It hasn't changed even since before Jesus came. He knew he was coming. And he told us that he was coming. And then he fulfilled those prophecies and then he came. And he's still telling us, even today, that he came. And he came for a reason. And it's as important for us today as it was for the Christians in that time when Jesus was walking and talking and uh, teaching his disciples his ways. And so, when we think about the way that Jesus died, and it, it can be all too easy to say that, oh, it's Pontius Pilate's fault that, that Jesus was crucified uh, you know, it, was, it was on his order. He, he was the one that was there and he could have stopped it all. Uh, but I don't think that there's anything on this earth that could have stopped Jesus from fulfilling what he came to do. Um, I, I don't think we need to, to play a blame game this morning. What we need to do is we need to look at Jesus and we need to look at what he did for us and, and the fact that he took our death. He died our death. And why did he do that? Because he loves us. He's loved us since the very beginning. He loved us when he came. It was the expression of love when he died on the cross. And he loves us today. And that's what we are celebrating today. As we take uh, the, the biscuit, the wafer, which signifies his body that was broken for us in love. As we take the cup, the, the juice that signifies his blood, poured out in love for us. And why is the love that Jesus has for us so important? Because when he died our death and he rose again, 
He gave us His life. And so the reason why we can have a relationship with Jesus, a relationship with the Father through Jesus, is because of the love that Jesus had to die our death and give us His life. I'd just like to ask each of you uh, this morning, if you're able to, to stand with me, um, those of you watching online, uh, would you stand with us too? We're going to uh, stand together and we're going to uh, take this uh, wafer, we're going to, to drink this juice, we're going to do it together as a, as a sign of, of unity, as a, as a family, and we're going to remember the love that Jesus had the love that Jesus has and the love that Jesus will continue to show to us this day, this year, and forever. We thank you, Jesus. Let's eat and let's drink together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your free gift, and we just you know, declare this morning as we start a new year, we're starting it with you, uh, Lord, the, the first communion uh, for 2022, uh, and we just thank you so much uh, that you loved us enough to die our death and give us your life, that we might have relationship with you and the Father. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Gary. Okay. Um, well, we're going to take up our offering uh, as well when the guys have uh, gone around and collected all the cups. Um, if they can go around and uh, collect our offering as well. As we think about this year, um, this coming year, you know, how will God bless us during 2022? The, the question probably more is, are we able to allow God to bless us? You know, part of um, God's law is given, it will be given to you. And so, you know, if we are generous, then we can have that expectation that God is generous to us. And how can we be a blessing to others? You know, in James chapter 4, verse 3, it says that if we ask with wrong motives, how can we expect that uh, God can fulfill his purpose or, or bless us if we have wrong motives? And I know I've said before here, you know, we, we shouldn't be giving out of what we do not have, but I guess we've got to ask ourselves why we do not have. You know, it might be genuine and valid, but it might also be that, you know, we've got to have all the latest gadgets and we spend our money on all the latest gadgets and we've got nothing left over to bless others with or to give. And so, you know, as we come into 2022, let's, uh, you know, it, it says um, to give cheerfully. It also says give what you believe God has shown you to give. And so as we come into 2022, let's be mindful of that as we give uh, of our free will offerings. And just while these guys are completing that, we'll just give thanks for the abundance that God gives us and the provision that he has for our lives. And so, Father, this morning, as we take up this offering, we acknowledge that it is part of your provision to us and your abundance in our lives. And Father, we look back and we just see your hand at work uh, bringing about your blessing in our lives. So Father, as we come into this new year, may we be mindful of how you can use us to bless others and how uh, we can determine what it is that we can give, whether it be time and, and talents and abilities or whether it is part of our finances. Father, just 
show us clearly as we come, as we go through this year of uh, the God uh, that you are who blesses abundantly and provides abundantly. So, Father, we just thank you. Thank you that we can give this, this offering and we just um, declare that it might be used for your um, glory and your honour and, and for the furtherance of your kingdom. So, Father, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Okay, um, just a reminder that there is no children's church uh, today because it's still holidays. Um, but we're thinking of the children. And also, um, we've got some birthdays and some anniversaries here. Um, not sure if any of them are here. Uh, Mia? Is Mia here today? No, Mia's not here. Owen Harling and Tash Hogan uh, for birthdays. And we'll just pray for them in a moment. Uh, it is a new year for them. And uh, anniversaries, uh, we think of Ron and Barbara Burgess who were here and uh, their anniversary is today, um, so wherever they are, we know that God is going to bless them in their future lives, but uh, we'll just uh, bring them, uh, lift them up this, this morning. We'll just pray for these guys um, as they go into another year. Father, we just thank you for the God that you are, the God that watches over each one of us, and we've been singing this morning that the battle belongs to the Lord. May we be reminded of that in our lives every day that the battle is yours and not to try and take the battle ourselves but to just rest and rely on you and father we just pray for these ones that are celebrating their birthday this week for Mia for Owen and for Tash father we just ask your blessing we declare your blessing over their lives oh God may they uh, know your peace in their hearts and father even in troubled times father may they each one look to you for their strength, for their enabling, and, and for uh, the, the ability to be able to um, work out the situations that they are in. May they look to you. and May they know your Holy Spirit at work in their lives. Father, we just ask that your Holy Spirit might be drawing them into a place of knowing you even more this year. And Father... May uh, your revelation to them, even, even the young, younger children, Father, may your revelation to them be real as they look to you and desire to walk according to your ways. Pray for Ron and Barb this morning, wherever they are, um, Father, as they uh, start a new era in their life in this year. Father, may you go before them. May your peace be upon their lives. And Father, may they just have that understanding of the purpose and, and the, the fulfilling of your purpose in their lives for this year. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, um, for next week's serving team will be team two. Yeah. Uh, and for upcoming events, we have the uh, bacon and egg stall on the 8th. Yep, come and buy a burger for a great cause, uh, and it is a great cause. Um, we make a lot of money for missions out of this, and uh, this is one way of blessing others. So if you can be involved in that, let um, Michelle know, yeah, um, if, and she'll work out a time for you to be there. That's really great. Um, another anniversary that's... Oh, wait a minute, I've got a note here. Is this... Current, there's a black rim, silver arms, glasses, ladies reading prescription. If you've lost um, one of those, somebody has it. Not sure who. But uh, yeah, come and see us and we'll work it out. Um, another anniversary that we got this week, um, through the week. Daryl's been with us uh, as pastor of this church for 25 years. What a great achievement, the fact that he stayed with us. A lot, of, a lot of churches, the pastors move on, and we've been really blessed to have Daryl as part of our church. And we will be having a celebration, and uh, we'll probably announce the date for that celebration next week. 
Uh, the the, the um, anniversary is this week, but uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, and we've been talking about it. Yeah. So um, we'll at least pray for Daryl and Trish next week, but uh, just keep them in mind uh, because it is a great thing that Daryl's been with us for those 25 years. Okay, um, and now Daryl's going to uh, come and bring the message to us this morning. Thanks, Daryl. Hey, good morning, everybody. I could have not have done 12 months of that without my precious wife. So I thank God for who God puts beside us. Amen. Well, it's so good to see you in the new year. For those that I haven't caught up with, Happy New Year. But as we open up the Word this, uh, this morning, and we want to try and keep things flowing pretty quickly here because uh, we haven't got that many children, but it does make a difference. We want to make it a bit easier for them. And so good to see some I haven't seen for a long time. And uh, we certainly rejoice in friendships. Amen? You know, this year, or would I say the new year, always gives churches and individuals the opportunity to turn. Turn from the past and turn to all God has for the future for them. But the key is to let the past year, or for some it may be years, to rest in the sweet embrace of Christ. There's nothing you and I can do to change the past, but we can choose not to carry it in the future. Amen? My encouragement as we begin this message this morning, give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. So as we embrace... 2022 as a church, I want to declare that it is a year of hearing. I want to declare for us as a church, it's all about hearing. Now, the prophets have declared that this year we'll have, we will have such a clarity of hearing the voice of God that we'll be in awe, we'll be amazed as how we're hearing the Lord. But I'm not talking about that hearing. I'm talking about we hearing each other testify of God's goodness and hear each other telling others the good news. Prophet Phalene said, The Father's favour and power is so coming upon us as she spoke to the leaders back in November. And what? has been impossible for us before will be possible this year. He's enabling his power, his favour, so your neighbours can know him, so that your friends can know him, so that strangers can hear about him from you and I. As an apostolic house, Apostolic people, I want to first remind you this morning that the word being apostolic means you and I are sent. We need an attitude of, of I've been sent. I've been sent wherever you work. That's not a, a place just to re, get a reward and be able to feed the family and look after the family. It's a place of ministry. I've been sent. If we have that attitude, whether you and I go in to a club or go into a, a gym or go into the shopping centre, is an understanding, Lord, you, I, I'm a, I've got this attitude of being sent. Who do you want me to meet with today? We're saying that I want us to look at a prophecy spoken over Trish and I back in November. And I'm going to pray and I just... Pray you, you get a little bit of a glimpse of what God's about, not just about to do, He's doing. Amen? So let's, let's just pray together. Holy Spirit, we love you. 
We so need you. I need you more than anybody. But my brethren need you. Those watching online need you. Those in the chapel need you. They need to know you, Holy Spirit, like never before. They need to become dependent upon you, Holy Spirit. Because you're the one that empowers our life. You're our best friend. You're the one that brings the Lordship of Christ within to our lives. You're the one enables us to live a life pleasing unto the Father. And so minister this word to each of us today. Let us, let us not just be touched by the word, but let us be changed. Let us make some good decisions out of what we hear today, we pray in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. Well, Ruthie, if you could play, roll that, please. This is November the 6th, I think it was. Of last year. Robo Sikara Bahaba Babaya. The dream, the dream, the dream, the dream. The dream of an apostolic, prophetic, end time church. I put it in your heart. I put it in your heart, the heart for the kingdom. And God says you are a builder. You're a builder in life. You're a builder in truth. You're a builder in the house of God. And I'm going to gather the men and women, even of the north, and they are even going to come and say, uh, this is a father in the faith. And they're going to come even as they came to the apostles of old and even laid finances at their feet and even laid their swords and shields as they did in David's time and said, yours we are, David. And God says, I'm going to bring those that are like-minded, like-spirited, like uh, the same DNA I've put within you, the dynamic nation-shaking anointing and the dream and the vision to have an apostolic end-time church raised up and trained up. And even though the enemies come and try to thwart it and abort it, God says that it is now in motion. It is already <clears throat> been birthed even in a new way, says the Lord. And I'm raising you up to be a voice, a leader and a champion of others. Many are going to rally and say, this is one that we can rally to who has a sure word of prophecy. For I put a prophetic anointing upon your life, even to speak forth to the dry bones. And even though others have said, can these bones live? God says it's the vision of vision, vision, vision. You'll prophesy into dry bones. You'll prophesy into those that have felt dry and lifeless and without hope. And God says, I'll raise up an exceeding great army for this nation. So God says the mandate is upon you. The new date is being released. The due date is coming forth. So you've not grown weary in well-doing. And I will truly bring you forth to reap your harvest. For many men and women in this nation will rise up and call you Father and call you blessed and acknowledge that you have laid down your life for the raising up of an end time church and it's just as Jesus was a chief cornerstone, I'm making you a chief cornerstone. I'm making you a chief cornerstone in the building of the temple of this end time Davidic house of worship of advancement for in the last days I will raise up again the tabernacle of David that they may possess their inheritance it's upon you both on the Lord's says, daughter even as you've served unstintingly poured out poured out poured out poured out you've been like broken bread and poured out wine you've not held back that which is even for your own self and you've even reached in when there was nothing and you've been, and you've found something. Therefore, your light will break forth like the noonday, and you'll be a repairer of the breach. And I'm going to cause many families to be restored. And you're going to be amazed what I do in your own loved ones and your own household. For there will be such a harvest. And God says, your children's children will rise up and call you blessed. And many who see you in your harvest and in your joy and blessing will know the hand of the Lord has done this. For I, the Lord, hate the robbery and the injustice of the enemy and will give you a full recompense daughter from the Lord under whose wings you shelter. It's upon you both. This new season of favour. Step in for it's a new date and many will gather. And God says there's going to come a more established expression and you'll put that footprint down 
And you'll say, come on, come on. It's time to build the kingdom. It's not about little individual glory trips, but it's about building the kingdom. Because you've had a kingdom heart, because you've had my heart, I'll back you all the way, says the Lord. I'll back you all the way. There's a yes coming out of heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So it's important that you heal out afresh because that can't be separated from the house. We're called to be an apostolic prophetic house. It's interesting that worship is, is still a very important part of our home. The church that is now coming to fruition. The prophet says it's in motion, it's happening. A Davidic house, that's interesting. And you and I are partnered to pioneer this apostolic prophetic church. And as we do, our voice of expressing the gospel of the kingdom will get louder. The Bible tells us that a person cannot see the kingdom until they are born again. Apostle Paul declared that Christ is the end of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Then he goes on to preach the gospel. I, I, I so want you to just read this together with me. What he says in Romans 10 verse 6 to 13. Because this is the gospel. Gary unfolded around the, 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 the communion this morning. But you and I need to live the gospel. The gospel of the kingdom. You can follow through. You don't have to speak out aloud. But from verse 6 it says, But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto, un, unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the Scripture says, whoever believes on him, on him, that's Christ, will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Beloved, I believe this year we're going to see many come to know the King of Kings. Not just know that God is. Because many believe that there's a God. But many don't know Him. And you cannot see the kingdom until you are born again. You and I are going to hear each other preaching this. Into the whosoever's. Because the word of God says, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. I believe Australia is about to hear. I, I believe Mariba is about to hear. I believe your neighbor is about to hear because we are not the only believers that God is speaking to and compelling us with the love of God to begin, to begin to see our neighbors come to Christ. It's time we had a dinner table revival. I spoke it last year. I believe this year we'll see it. Do I get a hallelujah somewhere? But Paul goes on to declare and challenge you and I this morning. In Romans 10 verse 14, it says, Then how shall I call on him who, in whom they have not believed? And how shall I believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall I hear without a preacher? Turn to your neighbor and say, you're the best looking preacher I've seen for a long time. And the husband and wives, that, that if 
But the dilemma you and I have, if the church is to be heard, we need to embrace the responsibility to preach the word. And I'm not talking about the pulpit here. I'm talking about in, in the news agencies, in the workplaces, in the gym, in wherever you, you may find yourself. And you can say, but Daryl, I'm not a preacher. And I say to you, you must become one. Because your heavenly Father desires that not one person should perish, but everyone to come to repentance and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. For too long we have lived in a lie thinking the only place to preach is from the pulpit. The truth is that your life should preach Jesus without you even saying a word. We know that. But people can see your life and say, well, I wonder what it is they have. I wonder what's about that family. And if you never tell them, they'll never know. I believe every one of you, if you're in Christ today, you've got a testimony of how you got saved. It's time to tell people. And the truth that goes with that is that Jesus expect you, expects you and I to proclaim your love for him. In Matthew 10, 32 to 33, this is to bring conviction and not condemnation. But the word of God says, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I'll also confess before my Father, who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I'll also deny before my Father who is in heaven. As we look back to Apostle Paul's statement in the following verse 15 of the 10th chapter, the Word of God says, And how shall I preach unless they are sent? I want you to connect the dots here this morning because to be an apostolic house means we are to have a, a mentality that we are sent. The Word of God goes on to say, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach, preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. I didn't have time to show you a, a little video this morning. But last Thursday, we baptized two men. I can tell you, they're very thankful that they heard the gospel. I can tell you, many here are very thankful that you heard the gospel. Someone had to tell you about Jesus. Someone had to tell you the only way to the Father is through the Son. My parents preached at me. They put me and positioned me in places to hear the Word of God. I thank God for them, and you, you would thank God for your parents. But come on, ALC, today I believe as you and I confess and declare, Lord, we can't do this. But by faith, we reach out and say, Lord, I know you, this is your will for my life. Anoint me. Let the anointing break off fear off my life. Let the anointing empower me. Let the anointing compel me to share my faith like never before with boldness, with an ability in my soul, within the inner man to tell others. That I would by faith lay hands on the sick. I would by faith heal people and perform true laying hands on the sick and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of Jesus. I believe we'll come a ch we will become a church of preachers. Are you ready? A year to hear. I so can't wait to hear 
You testify how you shared your faith with your neighbour, how you, how you shared your faith in whatever club you may belong to. Many years ago as I began to work in the prison in Lotus Glen, they were training us and we had, uh, by memory I think there was 90 of us, 89, 90, and we had to get up and, and, and tell people who we were in front of each other. I tell you what, I was scared, I was frightened, I was fearful. But because I stood up and said who I was, I had victory in that place. And I know one other man that didn't at the time, who was a brother in Christ, and he backslid. He came back to Christ before he died. He's my age, he's gone home to glory. But what a joy it is. Even through fear, even through, through feeling so weak on the inside, to know that we obeyed the Father at the end of the day. It was probably only about six months after I became a wonderful fully pledged believer. And I'd been to a men's breakfast and my wife and I, we called in to a brother, uh, my wife's brother-in-law and my wife's cousin was there. And he said to me, Daryl, what's happening in your life? And I felt the Holy Spirit say, tell him, tell him. And I couldn't. I couldn't tell him. I just, I wanted to. And I know that's the same with all of us. We want to. Times we can't do it. My wife's cousin, driving back to Weeper, got killed. I just pray he knew the Lord, but he got killed two days later. I tell you, I never repented so much in my life. And I said, Lord, every opportunity I get from this day on, I'm going to share. Oh, beloved. Your neighbor needs to hear your testimony. Needs to hear the gospel. In this day of craziness, in everything that's happening, people out there have no hope. They're full of fear. They need to hear. You tell them. That they can have a relationship with the God who created the heaven and earth and call him dad. As we turn to Isaiah chapter 6, this is an amazing story that happened to the prophet. This is his commissioning. But Isaiah 6, 1 to 8, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood Seraphim, each had one's each one had six wings, and two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, this is Isaiah, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it, and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, your sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. True and by the grace of God, Isaiah encountered the living God. Can you imagine seeing what he saw? We've often sung that song. Often sung it in, in my growing up years. 
We see the Lord high and lifted up. But one thing took place when, when he encountered God like this. And I pray this year you encounter God many times. Even today you may encounter the living God. That's between you and God. Amen. But as I was sitting last night and just pondering and thinking about this, I said, Lord, I, I really want to see this level of holiness. But the truth is I really don't. Because if you and I have such an account with God, I'm telling you, <laughs> oh, glory, get out of your way. You'll be coming through. Isaiah became very aware of his carnality. And when we start talking about telling people and, 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 and preaching, so to speak, I, I, I can feel very carnal. A carnal believer is one who's led by the flesh. And I can respond and say, God... I can't. See, as I was a man who believed God, who knew he was called, but he became undone before the Holy God. He knew he was not in a place to be commissioned, to be sent to the people, but he confessed, I'm a man of unclean lips. But the mercy of God reigned on him, cleansed and changed him from the inside out. Let me ask you this question. Isn't this what the Lord's been doing over the last Two years? I look at a lot of you that I know quite well and there's been a big change in the last two years. Some of you are still wrestling with God. I learned years ago that the wrestle that always goes his way. So I might as well give in at the start. But then again, the beauty of a butterfly comes out of a fight within the cocoon, Amen. And so there needs to be a wrestling going on so you can deal clearly and be free. But the mercy of God rained on Isaiah, cleansed and changed him from the inside out. I believe many of us have been repenting as Holy Spirit showed us that the problem's not in the, on, on, the, on the outside, but on the inside. It's in you and it's not others. It's in our fallen nature to point the finger. Blame God. Blame others for your situation. See, when man fell in the garden of Eden, the man Adam answered God's question. When he said, did you eat of the tree? What did he do? He just blamed Eve. The woman you put me here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. I tell you what, I, I've confessed that myself. This woman that you've given me, Lord. And don't you be so righteous, I believe a few of you have been blaming others as well. But then the woman got asked the same question. What she, who did she blame? The serpent. I feel sorry for the serpent in some ways because the serpent didn't get asked the question. He didn't, get, he, he, he didn't even have a chance to blame Adam or Eve. They were all guilty. Beloved, this is why we plead the blood of Jesus, amen? For the blood speaks on our behalf in the courts of heaven that I was once guilty, but today I'm not. I've been made righteous through Christ. So let the mercy drops of God rain, of God's rain, fall afresh upon each of us today. And if you've been blaming others, that's okay. God's not offended by it. It's just it's time to invite the Lord to touch you. Because what happened to Isaiah when he got touched by the Almighty God? He began to hear the conversation of heaven. 
There was no way he could hear this before he encountered God. And this is why I'd so encourage each and every one of you, whether you're online or in this place or in the chapel today, hunger for God, hunger to encounter him, because that encounter will set you forth into maybe the next decade of ministry. But Isaiah's response was, when he heard the conversation of heaven, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And little Isaiah put his hand up. Here am I, send me. And I pray today that you'll put your hand up humbly before the Heavenly Father and say, Father, I don't know who you can send me to, but send me. Send me. I believe we're becoming an apostolic house, a family who know we are sent ones, a family who knows we are learning. We are learning. Let me say this again. We are learning to walk this out. A family pioneering an apostolic prophetic end time church. We don't know what we're going to become. We had that word again this morning. I'm doing a new thing. But I know this, God's calling you and I. And we'll never be ready, but what we can be is willing and obedient. I'm going to get you to stand in a moment and hear a song that Prophet Faelene played over us back in November, over the leaders. It's a song that declares that you and I are pioneering. The difference between a pioneer and a settler is a lot. See, I could be very happy where I'm at right now. But the Holy Ghost says, you and I are so unsettled because he wants us to be a pioneer. And we've been pioneering this for a long time now, I can tell you. And we're going to see the fulfillment of it. But I first want to speak to those who don't know the Lord this morning. You've never given your life to Christ. And you want to get your heart right with God. And I'm speaking to you online or in the chapel or in this building here today. But you do need. To believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. You do need to repent. Repentance is regretting the life you've been living without God, without Christ being your Lord. Regretting that, turning from it, turning to God. Asking Him to forgive you, confessing of your sin. And receive Him by faith as your Saviour. So my friend, if God is speaking loudly to you this morning, and I know this as I was praying over this, that you, God's been speaking to you strongly for months now. And my encouragement with, the, with your fellow believers in this house is that you would surrender yourself. Choose to stop fighting against God and accept that He will accept you. As you turn to Him. He will not reject you. But I know this, as you receive Christ, from this day forward, He will do the changing in you. And just as Isaiah felt the sin, and the, the cleansing from sin and the cleansing from shame and guilt, that can be your portion today. And so I ask those here, would you please stand with me? And I'm not going to ask you to, to show your hand if God's speaking to you right now to give your life to Christ. But I do ask you to come and tell us if you are in this building today and because we're all going to pray this prayer on behalf for everybody together. But especially online, please let us know. We'd love to support you as you choose to walk with Christ as your Savior and King.
And so, beloved, please pray this prayer and those who are choosing Christ today, choosing to get your heart right with him, choosing to be born again, please pray this prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. I'm so sorry I've sinned against you. And today I choose to turn away from my sinful life. And I turn to you. Please forgive me of all my sin. Come into my life. Be my saviour. Be my friend. Be my father from this day on. Give me the power, Lord, to live for you. You died for me. I today choose to live for you. Amen and amen. As Ruth begins to play this song called Pioneer by Rick Pino, let the Spirit of God just so fill you and empower you. I'm going to come back and, and pray over us. Thanks, Ruth. Pioneer Pioneer Keep pressing onward Beyond your fears Only the Father Goes before you To your own frontier You're a pioneer Just lift your hands, let me declare over you tonight Pioneer You're a pioneer Keep pressing onward, you can't stay here, only the Father who goes before you to your own frontier, you're a pioneer, you travel light. And you travel alone And when you arrive Nobody knows But your Father in heaven He is glad you can go Cause those who come after you Will need the road you're a pioneer, a pioneer, keep pressing onward beyond your fears, only the Father goes before you to your own frontier. You're a pioneer And what you have done Others will do Bigger and better And faster than you But you can't look back You can't look back you can't look back You gotta keep on pressing through There's a wilderness pathway
Amen and amen. I decree and declare over this church that we are a church who are pioneers today. We're pioneers. I also declare that this is a year of hearing. We're going to hear one another. I decree it over this church. I decree also that we are an apostolic end time church. And together, with the help of the Holy Spirit, a lot of help with the Holy Spirit. We will become such. Well, as here this morning, only you and God and maybe those close to you know whether you've come into the service today and carrying the past with you. And if that's you and you like the power of the Holy Ghost right now to, to break that, I want you to lift your hand. Say, Lord, I'm offering the past. I'm offering what's been because I want to embrace what's now. I want to embrace what's now. Is anyone in the house? Praise God, nobody. Thank you, Jesus. Well, for those who are online, the few here with their hands up. Father, right now, I ask for a grace to come upon the whole church that's represented here to give to you, to put in your hands, Lord Jesus, the past, the past year, the brokenness, the, 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 the toughness of it, the, 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 the whatever it was or wasn't. And Father, I just release an anointing over every man, every woman that wants to walk out of it and embrace this new year of 2022. And where the enemy has, has entangled my brethren, where the enemy has even used the, what, the events of the past to limit and contend with my brother's or sister's journey of faith, I break that right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I loose you, beloved, into all that God has for your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, right now I pray. Lift your hands, beloved. I pray for a fresh anointing, a river to flow, O oh God, that would not be one contained within us but would flow in and through us. Let this year, O oh God, let us be ones that drip, Lord, with the anointing like never before. I thank you right now by faith that you're anointing each and every one of us, lows online, lows in the chapel, fresh anointing that we together may build the kingdom in 2022. We receive that right now in Jesus' name. Say with me, I receive it, Lord. I receive the anointing for 2022 in Jesus' name. Oh, come, worship team. Come, let us go out with a song this morning. But if you'd like prayer, we'd love to pray with you. Love to pray with you. If you're able, please stay for a time of fellowship, tea and coffee. Amen. It's so good to just uh, to, to be 
with God's people on a Sunday. Amen. Oh, I just pray that you begin to see with your own eyes what you haven't been able to see. Because you, your life in the hands of an awesome God, who knows what's going to happen next. But let's believe for a dinner table revival. Amen. Thanks, Anita. I think we should just sing that song that we sang last. I love you, Lord. His mercy never fails us. All our life you've been faithful, Lord. And in Psalms there's a verse that says, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I proclaim that over my life and over my kids' lives. And I know in my mind that means something. But in God's mind that can mean something far, far different and so much better, yeah. For your mercy never fails me, no my days have been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me, no all my days have been held in. A year of hearing from the Lord. And uh, whether it's ourselves or those we tell. But the, uh, I guess the big question for us is how do we hear from the Lord? Are we. It's only by spending time with Him, isn't it? And, uh, you know, what Daryl's been talking about, we want to uh, discover for ourselves this year. Um, what God has for us as a church and for us as individuals. And so let's be determined to spend time in hearing his word every day, every day. Spend time in hearing what God has to say to, to us and then sharing it with each other. We want to hear your discoveries of what you've discovered, new revelation of what uh, God has for us as a church and as individuals. So we'll just commit our way into the hand of the Lord uh, for this week. Father, we just thank you for 
the fact that you go before us, that you are in our lives. Father, that your Holy Spirit empowers us. And so, Father, as we go this week, may we know your hand upon our lives. May we be aware of your presence with us day by day. But, Father, may we take the time to hear, to spend with you, to hear. And, Father, may we be obedient to the word that you give us in our lives. And so, Father, as we go into this week, we just uh, ask that your blessing, or we declare your blessing over our lives, that you would go before us, that you would come behind us, that you would surround us, O God, with your love, with your blessings, and with your faithfulness. And, Father, may we just see your hand at work in our lives in every way every area that we encounter. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, as Daryl said, uh, let's share some fellowship together around a cup of coffee and uh, uh, a biscuit or whatever. And uh, God bless you all.